Welcome to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com, dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Serving leaders, managers, and people who will be, helping you reach excellence in your work and achieve your personal goals at the same time. Sign up for the free course at clearandopen.com. It seems to me that there'd be some reasonable criteria here. And those that's just knowledge. But if you think in terms of maturity, what's, what's the maturity test for that? Well, that's going to be decided by the people. Hmm, interesting model. And the people we're presuming are already adults, so are capable of voting for such a person? Apparently not, right? Hi, it's Joseph, and thanks for tuning in to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com. So do you consider yourself an adult? If you're 18 or older, you probably answer to yourself, yes. You might have even thought it was a stupid question to ask. And by the way, if you're not 18 yet, kudos for listening. You're way ahead of the curve. Now, especially if you rolled your eyes at the question, consider the answer to this. What is the definition of an adult? The answer isn't quite as obvious as you might think, and there's a good chance that you've never really considered it thoroughly. But it's a critical question to answer on the accountability path as both the manager of others or even just a manager of yourself. And it's the question we'll be engaging with over the next three episodes. If you want to go deeper on the subject, you'll find this included as part of the Accountability Path 2.0 course, a class that is currently available at courses.clearandopen.com. Also, the 2020 Clear and Open academic year is about to begin with the fall course, Money from Burden to Freedom. Of all the realms of business and personal management, money holds the greatest opportunity for change for a deceptively simple reason, because it's easy. Money is easier than marketing, sales, operations, customer service, and it's far easier than leadership and management. In fact, if you completed 8th grade, you have all the math skills you need to manage money. You need only the barest critical thinking skills, and you don't even need much time. Finance, quite simply, is one of the most rudimentary aspects of human existence. Then, you may be thinking, why are we so bad at it? People have problems with money for the same reasons they have issues with God, sex, and power. They have distorted beliefs and assumptions that cause them to behave irrationally and immaturely. Everyone, everyone begins with a messed up relationship with money. Money in its most basic form is a symbol of value and nothing else. It's squeaky clean and far from being the root of any evil, but the wounded ego in us changes it. We project onto money our deepest insecurities and make a mess. I've wanted to do a course on money for a long time and it's finally happening. Money from Burden to Freedom begins September 24th, 2020 at 11.15 a.m. Pacific Time. The content of the course is practical, proven methods for managing money, which we'll use to find your problematic relationships with it. In other words, I'm going to give you things to do, and when you have trouble, we'll find out what's in the way on a psycho-spiritual level. For more information, please go to clearandopen.com slash money. Okay, thanks for listening. Let's start the show. So the assignment was to consider and contemplate, maybe even write about what an adult is. So I'd like to do a dialectic today. Does anybody know what a dialectic is? It's a very fancy philosophical term that's rapidly, as many critical thinking uh, components are in our world, rapidly falling out of common usage or even basic understanding. A dialectic is a investigation into the truth of things, especially uh, values, principles, metaphysics. So it's a, an exploration and an investigation into what is true about something. So the Cre- Socratic dialogues, the, the, the ones Plato wrote, uh, which is all what we have of, uh, of Socrates, those were dialectics. You know, what is truth? What is beauty? Uh, what is knowledge? Where does it come from? Those are dialectics. And the, um, I would argue that part of being an, an, an adult is actually engaging in dialectics, wanting to know what the truth is of things. In 
abstract ways, like what is beauty? Certainly that could be interesting, but in more practical ways, there are issues that we constantly are operating with, assumptions about what is love, right? We all make decisions in our life based on ideas like what is love, what is friendship, what is uh, professionalism, what is um, intimacy. Uh, And we, as humans, we tend to operate with uh, assumptions and mm, conclusions about what these things are without very much thought into them. And that, I would say, is one of the reasons why we're in the mess that we are in, in this world, because there's not a deep investigation into what these things are. And we like to think we know what these things are, but um, uh, the nuances and subtleties can be quite tricky and challenge our critical thinking. That's just sort of a sidebar. So that's what we're going to do today, a dialectic. And speaking of uh, subtle things that we take for granted, the idea of being an adult, right? So all of you have an assumption, I would assert, that you're an adult, right? So what makes you think so? You must have some idea about what an adult is to be able to make that conclusion. Doesn't it seem logical that if you consider yourself an adult, that you're able to describe and define what an adult is? Right? If you said you had an iPhone and I said, well, what is an iPhone? You'd be able to describe it. And that would be indicative of, okay, this person knows what they're talking about. If you said you had an iPhone and held up a smoothie, then I would say, well, it could be that you don't actually know much about iPhones or smoothies. <laughs> might be a lot of conclusions we might make from that. So what is an adult, you guys? Do you want us to go if we have a thought on it? Yeah, yeah. Please, we're going to start with. We're going to, that's the dialectic. It's a it's a shared exploration. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's always a joke that you're an adult when you start paying your own bills, kind of thing. Okay. You know? So an adult, <laughs> adult it, it, that's an important assertion, right? There, we could talk for six days straight about this, right? So don't worry about providing an exhaustive answer. You won't, <laughs> right? But my, in my actual uh, opinion of what makes an adult, it's the progression of thought feelings and reactions throughout life so it's like as we grow into adulthood our feelings are different compared to when we were 15 16 our reactions should be different as opposed to when we were younger as well as our thought process is everything progresses due to experience okay good different in what ways um, different in the ways that we react to good news bad news we react to circumstances in our lives through experience, the way we actually process it. Okay. So like by, a, lot of, a lot of adults is just processing and how to make that move forward with our lives. Okay. So, so far what you're saying, um, I could say, well, if a, uh, if a, an individual at 15, when they hear bad news, receives it in a calm and sober way, and a quote unquote adult at 25, when they receive bad news, they throw a tantrum, then that would fit your description because it's different than how they were. It's progressed in yeah, some like way. It has nothing to do with age. It has to do with the actual just processing and progression of feelings and reactions and how we go through things. In my so, so a 25-year-old who hears bad news and throws a tantrum as an adult to you? Doesn't show the, doesn't show the qualities of an adult, no. Well, what are those qualities? Those qualities are being able to handle situations and to be able to determine where to go from them and make an actual decision that progresses you forward, progresses the situation forward. Well, what if that adult feels that throwing a tantrum is a completely appropriate uh, way of behaving and does move them forward? But then you look at the rest of their lives and how they handle the rest of their lives, and I guarantee that that tantrum that they're throwing shows you exactly how a lot of things in their life actually goes. Mm -hmm, Perhaps. But what I want to point out, Desmond, is you started out by saying, it's a progression. You didn't say what qualities would actually pro- progress. See, and so that's what we're go- that's what you're going to discover, you guys, today is that it's exceedingly difficult to pin down what actually the qualities of, of an adult are. So Desmond is touching upon them, but if this requires specificity, yeah. So I found this exercise 
one of the more challenging ones of all of your challenging exercises because I've never thought about what a spiritual adult is. I've never seen it modeled. I've never seen it modeled what an emotional adult is. And under my context, it's really just under, you know, what Desmond was talking about. It's like, you're adult if you have a job and pay your bills. Yeah. If you have your responsibilities. That's what I have learned as an adult. So after looking at it, I would define an adult as someone who takes in all information and is able to be their authentic self and make decisions, I, I guess, based on on what is without projection or, um, yeah, without projection. Okay. And, uh, 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 and, and I guess, I guess if I were to summarize it, I would say an adult takes an informed and measured response. Like if oh. I were to hear something, I would take in all data points and mm-hmm. saying, I've now, I now have all of this information. I'm going to do my best to provide what I believe is a mature response in whatever category mm-hmm. of pursuing the truth or, or whatever it is in that case. Okay, good. So an informed and measured response. So, uh, Desmond, can you see how Ed is, is piggybacking on what you said? You started out yeah. with, well, there's a progression. And I totally agree with that. But it's not enough to say only that there's a progression. Progression to what? And so now we're saying, okay, well, something without projection, which means you're seeing the situation clearly, not adding any delusions to it, and yeah. seeing the situation clearly and, and therefore being able to come up with a measured and informed response. Yeah, Very like good. You said multiple times, you know, wiping the mud from your glass kind of thing, mm-hmm. and your glasses, and, you know, seeing everything for what it actually is. And then, like Ed's saying, making that well informed decision. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the thought process I was going with. He just, you know, put it a little bit more <laughs> loquaciously than I did. <laughs> but it's important, Desmond. Did, did, I, I'm curious whether you saw or not the flaw in your argument, because it was important. You spoke to a progression without saying what that progression is. So, based on what you originally said, yeah, I spoke to progress for the sake of progress, not actually what needs to be progressed. Right. You didn't define that progress. And that's what we're here to do today. So I think it's a great, it was a great starting point, but there's some kind of progression. What is that? What is this? Another way of framing this question. What is the process of maturation? But that's a whole other story. We, that would be way more difficult, actually. Let's talk about what the end point is. What are we maturing to toward? What is the ultimate state of consciousness known as adulthood? I uh, thought it was challenging, like Ed said, um, so challenging that I went to the dictionary and said, what does the dictionary think an adult was? And, you know, fully developed and mature, blah, blah, right? One, <laughs> says, one says, a human being after the age of 21. I mean, it went through all these and I thought, well, that's not true. Then, you know, we talked about it months ago that we're all developing and mature. I think adult is simply a title that we've put on it and that um, we are all progressing to Desmond and Ed's points over our life. Some of us may never get to an informed measured response. Doesn't So in that way, I don't see them as adult, but adult means you're over 21. So I was struggling with it because I think, like we talked about, it's the complete maturation through our whole lives that we're always continually growing um and someone at some point said you're an adult when you're 21 and i kind of agree with desmond's point i was thinking about that stuff you know about paying your own bills having your own house and all that stuff and not mm-hmm. having a, a safety net mm-hmm. but the government has taken that away right yes. there's safety nets everywhere for everyone so you can be you can make an uninformed decision and still be safe. Uh, you have the freedom to not be an adult. Yes. So interesting, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Here's another way to, to think about it. Do you guys know what the criteria are to be president of the United States? It's in the constitution. You have to be a certain age. 35. You have to, you have to be 35 or 35. older. Born in the U.S. And born in the United States. And, and a U.S. That's citizen. It. Yeah. And that's it. And then you just have to win the election. Those, that's it. Those three things. If you want to get into the military, if uh, there's higher standards, more standards than that, and which happen to be higher, right? Think about all of the places. You know, if you want to, 
get a driver's license. You've got to take a test. You know, that tests your ability to read signs and take in information. You know, do really, really basic thinking. Uh, A lot of the driver's tests, the one I took in Massachusetts when I was 16 was such a joke. It was 10 questions and I think a six-year-old could have passed it, but they've become harder in some states. It's staggering to think, right? We're talking about the, the, you know, the quote unquote leader of the free world and they don't even have to take like a test. It's odd, isn't it? Mental stability, knowledge of constitutional law, uh, you know, knowing how a bill becomes a law. <laughs> it seems to me that there'd be some reasonable criteria here. And those, that's just knowledge. But if you think in terms of maturity, what's, what's the maturity test for that? Well, that's going to be decided by the people. Hmm. Interesting model. And the people we're presuming are already adults. So are capable of voting for such a person? Apparently not, right? So it's quite stunning when you start to step back and, and look at there's no agreed upon criteria for what adulthood is. And as uh, Catherine pointed out, uh, you know, the age of 21 is we're going to look without an absence of clearly rigorously defined criteria. We're going to look toward physical maturity and uh, legal options, right? You're an adult when you can go buy alcohol. I mean, that's what 21 gets you in this society, right? Does 21 get you anything else? I don't think so. You can vote at 18. You can buy cigarettes at 18. Well, I guess that's 21 in some, in some, but you get all of your legal rights at 21. Boom, you're an adult. Consider what the impact is for the 21-year-old. Y'all remember when you were 21. How mature were you then? Right? You're at a bar, probably, have, you know, getting carded, smiling broadly, celebrating the fact that you are now 21. It reminds me of my bar mitzvah when I was 13, celebrating that I was a man. <laughs> Boy, was that cognitively dissonant. I, my freshman year in high school, I was 5'1", 115 pounds. I did not feel like a man at age 13. <laughs> so uh, here I am like reading some kind of speech about what that means. You know, it's funny that you say it like that because you got to look like what Catherine read about is like she read in the dictionary. But when was that, when was that definition written? Like at, at 21, when that definition was written, you probably already had two or three kids. You're probably already, you're probably already working like, you know, 12 hour days, mm-hmm. you know, where our, you know, we can say this generation, that generation, this generation, but as we progress forward, I feel like the actual adulthood that we're looking for keeps going further. Ah, excellent where observation. It's one of those things where I'm 35 now, but I still, outside of work, <laughs> I, I act like I'm, you know, 24, 25, you know, because then it's also like, who am I hanging out with? Mm-hmm. It's like all my lifting buddies, all my softball friends, all my football buddies, they're all 25, 26, 27. Mm-hmm. So I'm hanging out with them. You know, so it's when I talk about that that progression, it's like, where is that? You know, it's funny that Catherine read that definition. It's like 21. She's I was not even close to an adult at 21. Mm -hmm. You know, but then you look at your grandparents. They were absolutely an adult at 21. Some of them were adults at 15, 16. In what way were they adults? You you spoke. We're we're talking about we're talking about like that definition. Yeah. Now you got now you got health insurance where you're on your parents' health insurance to your 26. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're still taking classes in school, so you're not on your own health insurance. We have people that still don't work full time jobs until they're 28, 29, 30. Mm-hmm. You know, so in the aspect of, you know, making the joke before about paying bills, doing things like that, with the definition of 21, yeah, they took care of everything themselves. They owned a house at 21, kind of thing. Right. Now it's like, like I said, it's getting pushed further and further back. Just like the, the age of the average age of getting married now, the mm-hmm. average age of having kids now, the average age of buying your first house retirement is all getting pushed, is all getting pushed back. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Thanks for listening to Manage to Engage, the clear and open podcast. Join us next week when you'll be a little bit closer to who you're destined to be. Until then, know that Clear and Open is dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do.
If you want to help the show grow, I'd appreciate you leaving a rating and review on iTunes. All you have to do is open the Apple Podcasts app, view the full description of the episode, and click the link to leave a rating and review. Or you can go to clearandopen.com slash review, and it will bring you to the right place. If you're looking for more support on your journey, head over to clearandopen.com for even more tools, articles, and free resources. Thanks so much for listening. Bye for now.